All right, so we're back at the high-tech kitchen counter test demonstration bench slash cheeseburger center, but I already made my cheeseburger and ate that, so don't get to see that cooking today. I had someone ask me about a Cobra 29 and some mods, and this isn't a Cobra 29, but it's a PC-76, basically the same thing. This one has already had the uh, mod done to it, which is just a capacitor and a resistor where you remove a jumper. But I wanted to give some information on that and then also talk about the voltage of a power supply when you're testing a radio or when you're having your radio tuned up or tested at the local radio shop. It's a lot of local radio shops that aren't quite so honest. So I'm going to demonstrate some of that now. And we get started with just a dead key and showing some modulation and some power at 12.4 volts. There's our dead key. It's just about point, point 0.3, point 0.4 watts. Pretty low dead key. And you can see some modulation on there. Hello, audio. And if I get up close to the mic, you will see what kind of power it does. Hello. Audio. Which is pegging. So let's go over here. Put it on the 100 watt scale. And I'll do that again. Hello. Audio. Look at that. Audio. Pinched off signal with lots of positive modulation there. Hello. 20 watts. 20 watts of pure modulation and a pinch signal. Now, I'm going to put on an annoying, if I can pronounce that, shit, man. I think I had too much Coca-Cola today. I'm going to put that back on the 10 watt scale and do 100% modulation with a tone from my fancy phone. Hold it up here to the, hold it up here to the microphone and show you what we get here. At around, at around 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 100% modulation should be, oh, over one watt, but not two. Should be four times the carrier, so if it's 0.3, it'd be 1.2 watts. So let's see what we get here. I'm gonna slowly move this speaker closer to the microphone. And at 100% modulation, we're getting just over one watt. And we're showing that. Give me one second here, man. I got the mic game too high. All right. Anyways, at 100% modulation, we got about the four to one ratio there on the from the carrier to the modulated power over here. And at 100%, you're seeing right at 100% on there also on the scope. So. It's not perfect, but somewhere right around 100% there. Unmodulated and modulated. Then you see if I go more modulation, it pinches the carrier off. But boy, do we got some power there, huh? And that's just me moving the tone closer to the mic. So what I was going to show, yeah, you can get a lot, a lot of positive modulation with that mod. But your radio is going to be splattering on quite a few channels. But at 100% modulation, you're just doing the normal, normal 1 to 4 ratio there. So what I was going to show you, let me turn off this annoying tone. What I'm going to show you is, if you remember, we had 20 watts of power there. So let me, um, let me turn up the power on this power supply to good old 15 volts, like some of those unscrupulous uh, radio shops. Let's get around 15 volts there, all right. Now, now our dead key went from 0 0.3, 0 0.4 to uh, over 0.8. And now watch our power. Let me uh, go to the 100 watt scale there. Hello. 
we went from 20 watts to 26 watts by turning up our power supply. That's just on a little CB radio. Now granted it was mod so should be doing 4 watts stock with the mod on there it was doing 19 watts and now with the voltage cranked up like I'm a CB repair shop or an unscrupulous CB repair shop audio I'm doing 26 or better that's what I wanted to show was how if you go to the CB shop and they're running their power supply high they're gonna show you all kinds of watts all kinds of watts on your radio and then you're gonna put your radio back in your car or your truck which charges at 14.4 but your actual voltage that you're probably if you connect it in your dash to some factory power wires you're not gonna probably get much more than 13 volts or so so that brings our dead key back down and audio brings our peak power way down too so the difference between 26 watts and 19 watts just by going um, two volts on the power supply it's quite a bit of difference I don't know exactly what the difference there is but it's like shit I don't know 20 percent more power just by turning the voltage up and a lot of radio shops do that and they show you all this power and then you get your radio back in your car you go to your buddy's house and he wants to check it on his watt meter and you're not getting the power you thought you were and that's because it only does it with high voltage anyways this has been keyed up the whole time I got the got the ring here keyed up and just so you know this transistor is barely the output is barely even warm at all barely warm and that's due to the fact that the mods on there with the low dead key um, you know not even one watt if that had a stock the stock jumper wire on there you'd uh, your radio would be pretty hot by now but with that low dead key hello it's only getting a lot of power when you modulate so anyways hello 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 audio if you wanna have your meters swinging and banging and you don't mind your signal clipping and splattering everywhere your radio is going to sound loud you're going to sound loud to a lot of people it's going to give you a lot of audio a lot of swing on the meter may actually make your amplifier and your radio run cooler unless you're a real real ratchet jaw but um anyways just wanted to put that information out there and i'm going to pause this video for a minute and uh, that blue capacitor is part of the mod. There was a jumper wire there. You put this capacitor in its place and then on the other side you solder a resistor. So I'm gonna pause this, flip the radio over, show the resistor, and then I'm gonna end this video. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Same radio. Here's the resistor. It's the way I install them. There was a jumper wire there, and now there's a resistor. But the jumper wire came from the other side. I put the resistor on this side. You can look at the colors there, figure out the ohms if you want. These radios, the 29s, depending on the voltage you're actually getting to the radio and what ohms you choose on that resistor will dictate what your dead key is. Uh, I've used anything from from 30, 30 ohms all the way up to 100 ohms, depending on the dead key you want and just for fun I'll show you over here there's a resistor in there that resistor is for the talk back it might be kinda hard to see where I soldered it on but that gives you a little bit of talk back on this radio and I just put it in some heat shrink so it doesn't uh, doesn't um, short out on anything it's actually two resistors in there in series but only because I didn't have the right resistor so anyways there it is. That's where it goes. Normally there's a jumper there. That resistor will get hot. That boy will get hot. And um, some people don't use that. They put jumper wires and go up to one of the knobs on the front, like say the squelch or a delta tune or something like that. But 
that'll work for a short while and then the the, the trace on that variable resistor will burn real easy. They can't handle the power that a much bigger resistor can. Anyways, that's it. An old PC76XL, which is basically a Cobra 29. Have a good day.